Welcome to this tutorial on GHS scripting. Tutorial, num tutorial number 810 focuses on GHS macros. So GHS macros, uh, today we're going to cover how to create them and how to run them, and then also how to use them for inputs. But before we get into that, a brief disclaimer. Uh, this presentation is for instruction purposes only. It is not to be used in engineering for construction. And I am not a representative of Creative Systems. This is unofficial training only based upon my own personal knowledge and experiences. Uh, for the official training, you can contact Creative Systems at the information on the bottom of your screen. I highly recommend it. It's quite informative. Okay, so GHS macros. Now, when I first started these tutorials, I mentioned that GHS is also a programming language. Uh, up to now, we've been more or less just teaching the vocabulary of that language, all the various commands. But with macros, we really take the first step in building GH up as our GHS up as an intelligent language. Uh, it's a language that has functionality in it, repeatability, and GHS macros are really at the heart of its abilities to do that. So it's a very fundamental concept, and it's probably the concept that makes GHS worth all of the effort. So macros are the programming equivalent of functions. Uh, they're used to repeat blocks of code multiple times. And how these functions and macros behave is you uh, create them in your run file along with everything else. Uh, you create them before you use them, but once you've created them, you can execute them multiple times. And the literal interpretation, if you're trying to think how does that happen, uh, basically every single spot that you've executed the macro code is where GHS literally inserts that macro code. So how do you create the macros in GHS? Um, so you start with the keyword macro, and then right after that, whatever you want to call this particular macro, so whatever the name is. Uh, your macro name has to be 12 characters or less. Then you write your own code, and here's the critical part. You end the macro with a forward slash. Uh, as good programming practice, generally what I will do is I will first create my beginning statement, my macro and mac macro name, and then immediately type my ending slash, and then insert any code in the middle. Um, you'll want to certainly double check that you always have your ending slash. GHS does not check for ending slashes. Uh, it doesn't have any form of error checking like that. So if you don't have it, GHS is going to end up interpreting your code very odd, and it's a very hard error to track down. As to what goes in the middle of your macro code, uh, basically anything you want. Any of the language, any of the, the uh, vocabulary, any vocabulary, any commands that we've discussed so far, all of that can go into macro code. And you'll actually find that people will uh, very often create a set of personal library macros. Uh, these will be blocks of code that they find themselves using all the time based upon their personal preferences. Uh, so that's the kind of thing that goes into macros. It saves you effort, to re saves you repeat coding. Okay, now you've created the macro. How do you actually use it? How do you execute the macro? Well, as I said, make sure you define it first. And that's literally, uh, as you read your run file from top to bottom, the macro definition must come before you, the first time that you use it. Uh, as to how to use it, the GHS command is dot macro name. Uh, no space between them, just a period and then the name of your macro. Uh, there's also the execute command, which does the same thing, but this this dot is essentially the shorthand way of writing it, and m almost everybody always writes it this way. So here's an example. Uh, we've started by defining a macro called right arm. Uh, here's my GHS command in the middle. That could be anything. And then you can see here later in my run file, I just type dot right arm. And that's how that works. Okay, now macro inputs. This is uh, one of the other more powerful things about macros. See, so far we've talked totally about the macros being a static block of commands. It does the exact same command sequence the whole time, every single time. 
but you can also supply inputs to your macro and change the behavior of your macro depending on the inputs. Uh, now, how do those inputs work? Uh, they're based upon sequence of data entry. So it's literally first item, second item, third item. You can supply up to nine inputs for every macro definition. And as to how it's implemented within the macro, uh, GHS interprets every input as a straight substitute text substitution of the code. So wherever you've specified the first input needs to get used, whatever you type in, whatever text you type in for your first input is substituted directly into that spot in the macro code. Uh, so how to do this? Um, you know, basically you use the inputs in the macro definition and then in step two you will actually supply those inputs with the execution. So here's an example of how you actually um, use them during execution. Uh, what you'll do is you'll actually uh, still do the dot macro name. In this case I have a macro called new page. And then you just literally provide the inputs. Um, and separate each input with a comma. So this is my first input, this is my second input, and this is my third input. Uh, as to how do you actually use those inside your macro, uh, the way you define them, it's based purely on sequence of entry. So the substitution is percent %n, where n is any number from 1 to 9. Uh, so you know, percent one is the first input. So for example here in our macro that we've defined called new page, uh, there's a percent one, percent two, percent three. So I have three inputs defined for this macro and they match. That's my first input. That's my second input. So this is percent one, this is percent two, and this is percent three. So in this case, this macro would actually be called subtitle, title 1, title 2, title 3. And that's how that works. Okay, so now it's time to practice these macros in your own homework. Uh, definitely, this is one of the homeworks you want to do. Get very comfortable with practicing macros and using them all over the place. It's not just enough to be okay with macros. This is something you really want to become comfortable with and like using. So what I want you to do uh, in homework number 811, there's a run file for a damage stability exercise already supplied. I would like you to edit that run file uh, and create three separate macros. I want you to create the stability criterion as one macro, the uh, reset um, code as another macro, and then the equalization of the vessel is going to be a third macro. And then for the uh, fourth macro, I would like you to have uh, every new case change the subtitle and put all of that subtitle changes in the uh, new macro. So in this new subtitle macro, you're going to pass in the text for what is the load case, the damage case, and the stability criteria. Those will be inputs to the subtitle macro and it will take those inputs and create a new subtitle and a new page. And then once you've defined all of those macros, repeat your damage stability exercise using the macro calls. So you know before when we did this you had to copy and paste text all over the place. Now you will paste your text exactly once and then you'll just copy and paste macro calls all over the place. But you're still going to have to define your damage cases. Okay. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have found this informative and educational. You can find the homework files, their solutions, and other tutorials at dmsonline.us. Thanks very much.